When I told the truth, God said to set me free. The book of Corinthians reminds us the Lord uses the foolishness of the world to confound the wise. It was very foolish to me to tell the truth. That's what the world have us. But God is calling us to a new standard in this day and time. To be an example to others, starting with our household. To walk in integrity. And he looks and sees what we're doing behind closed doors. I got set free and it doesn't all end with the mountaintop experience. The church surrounded me. They brought me a wife. She was a ventriloquist. I was her new dummy. <laughs> the reason I was a dummy is because I had not laid aside those weights, the hooks, the lust of the eyes, the flesh that had controlled me. Two beautiful children born. Went back to college. Or you in Tulsa. Got my degree by then. Separation. But I wanted to be with children. And you're God's children. And he wants to be with you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to spend time with him first. He wants you to join his family. My wife and we married in 1992 and we want to adopt a little girl so bad. We adopted our son 10 years ago and I, a friend of Connedy, of Bob Getty, one of our ministry board members, he said, maybe we can adopt a child with a false adopt, but you can't have a felony on your record. I said, let me call the defender and ask how do you get a governor's pardon to remove the felony and knock on the adoption door. I called him. It had been 23 years since I'd been released. He was thrilled that one of his former clients was still out. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He told me what to do for a getter governor's pardon, and then he told me something I didn't know for 23 years. He said, Phil, the year after your release, the Supreme Court changed the law back. You see, I told the truth that a year and a half later, the Supreme Court changed the law based on somebody else's case. I was set free because I told the truth. God wants to set the captives free, but it can only come by us telling the truth, saying, I knew, I need you, Jesus. But it's not just about him being Savior. We've got to surrender his being Lord of our lives and Lord of everything in our lives. I love it now when, when my wife and I spend time together talking about what's bothering us. It's a good place to be. Accountability should start at home. But we as guys especially need to be finding somebody we can trust. That we can talk about those difficult things. It's time we lock arms and walk together. But it starts with a relationship. I'd like to pray two prayers tonight. One for salvation. And one that if you need prayers to have change broken off your lives, I'd like to pray that. God says that this is the promise in 1 John. That he's given us eternal life. And this life is in his son Jesus. He that has the son has life. He that hath not the son has not life. He who knew no sin took all of our sin into his cross. He paid it for us. It's a free gift. Let's pray for us real quick. Let's stand to our feet, brothers. To see you and their, their family members. To see you and other people. Give us a heart for you, God. Give us a desire to, to want to know you personally. To know you intimately. And the power of your resurrection. And to be identified, yes, even to suffer with you. I pray for their family members, for salvation for the whole house, God. And I pray, Lord, that you begin to give them favor as their character changes, as they begin to in your wisdom, in your grace. I pray this in Jesus' precious name, and let's give him praise. Amen. And amen. Come on, give him praise. Come on, let's give a hand tonight. Come on, children. Woo! Thank you. Stand up for Mr. Phil Hicks tonight. What a